my name is Katsu Goda from Civil Engineering. So I'm not a scientist, and I'm really I'm kind of doing the research in between science, social science, and engineering technical uh, solution uh, to say natural disaster. Um, today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is the tsunami, which is not related to the volcanology. Um, but I think there's some interesting kind of similarity in terms of risk characteristic between tsunami and then uh, the Tohoku, uh, sorry, uh, the volcano uh, hazard. And also, I just want to point out uh, that the, uh, this situation is a big real case study in, in a sense that the, um, the, our imagination uh, was not good enough to imagine what would be the extreme event. So in tsunami, this event, um, um, our expectation, whatever the probabilistic risk hazard uh, assessment has been uh, exceeded significantly and then lots of loss uh, was caused in terms of casualty as well as economic losses. Um, so I hope you can see uh, uh, some uh, good kind of uh, interesting feature uh, from this uh, presentation. And also, I just, uh, my intention uh, is just to give you some sort of uh, quick kind of tour to Tohoku, 20 minutes tour. So I, I'm going to show lots of pictures. So um, the contents, um, I would like to talk about some kind of facts about the magnitude of 9.0, uh, March 11th, uh, Tohoku earthquake, and especially the tsunami damage. By the way, I'm a, a kind of earthquake engineer and then the seismologist, not the, the tsunami specialist. So um, again, my um, uh, knowledge, uh, background information is le relatively limited on tsunami, but I can hopefully show some interesting uh, things about the tsunami risk. Um, also, I want to show uh, some pictures about the performance of the tsunami protection, which could be the breakwater, sea walls, et cetera. And then I want to show some uh, uh, case study uh, for the vertical evacuation building. Basically, we build a relatively high-rise building, and then the people can evacuate if some sort of warning uh, is issued. And then, uh, in the end, I want to summarize some uh, lessons uh, to be learned from this event. So uh, this uh, talk is related to EFIT, earthquake engineering field investigation team uh, organized by the Institution of Structure Engineer. Uh, and then I was one of the members. Uh, there were nine members. There were uh, the, the uh, earthquake specialists uh, in terms of professional uh, industry, and also geophysicists, and then a tsunami specialist, and the seismologist, etc. It was really, really exciting kind of uh, trip. Uh, to, to see the real damage uh, on the ground. It was happened about a year ago, and we covered a relatively large area. This is the fourth rupture of the Tohoku earthquake, which is 500 kilometer in the strike, and about 200 kilometer in the dip direction. Uh, mostly, we focus on the tsunami affected location, so you can see busy uh, uh, cities along the coast, and then, but the ground shaking, because it was a magnitude of 9.0 events, uh, ground shaking was also uh, intensive and uh, some damage, uh, including uh, the, the structure's failure, landslide, liquefaction, has been happened. One thing bef uh, before I start uh, um, showing uh, pr uh, lots of pictures, uh, one, one thing I want you to know uh, is that the coastal kind of feature is very different in the northern part and in the southern part. So the northern part is very jacked, submerged rivers. So this is called Rias uh, coastline. Uh, if we go south, then we have a very plain, uh, flat uh, coastal plains. And then these two different uh, topography has a significant impact on the tsunami. If we have a Rias uh, kind of coast, uh, inundation or tsunami height will be very, very large, say 20 meter, say four story building. But if we have, say, coastal uh, plain, then the tsunami uh, height will be at most, say, 10 meter. But because it's flat and nothing to obstruct, uh, it can go far, far inland, about two, three kilometers. So we see very, very different uh, damage features for different layers and in the coastal uh, areas. So just the fact, uh, it was a very large event, magnitude of 9.0, catastrophic tsunami damage, more than uh, 19,000 uh, deaths or missing. 
coast. And in direct loss is about 300 to 400 million, uh, billion, sorry, uh, US dollars, which is about one third of the fiscal uh, budget for the Japanese government. So single day, just one third of the budget was blown out. Um, as I mentioned, lots of uh, infrastructure damage, uh, coastal defense, uh, infrastructure load, bridges, layaway, whatever uh, um, the, the structures in the tsunami region, uh, they were affected significantly. And then uh, probably still an uh, ongoing issue in the, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plants crisis, probably really uh, can uh, mention uh, this, uh, about this event uh, more uh, uh, in detail, but I'm not going to touch uh, about this event. Just uh, quick damage statistics. Uh, this table is from the National Police Agency after three, about three months. And then those are the, the number of the, uh, the damage building, different uh, extent uh, for the different prefecture. And you can see the first three prefecture, Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima, uh, prefecture were affected significantly because we can see the large number and then those are the, the, the prefecture and then uh, along the coastal line. This pie chart shows uh, the, the distribution of the casualty or the fatality uh, based on the age group. One thing we should notice is that the, say 60% of the, the fatality are the old people, older people. Uh, greater age greater than 60 people. So there is very disproportionate uh, risk uh, to the older people. And probably this is related to the, the mobility of the evacuation uh, in the tsunami, and so on, so on. So we have to consider uh, when we come up with some sort of solution, this uh, risk profile uh, to the society. Uh, magnitude of 9.0 event uh, happened uh, to about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and that was very e uh, uh, lucky for us because everybody was active, and then the students were still at the, uh, the school, so like evacuation for the, the younger generation was relatively smooth. But uh, because lots of uh, younger generation was out of the home, then a uh, significant risk happened uh, to the older generation who stayed at home. Um, the, the lots of location uh, experienced uh, more than 10 meter high uh, tsunami, and then significant uh, land deformation happened. So the contour uh, shows the, the deformation uh, of the, the seabed. So that was about 40 meter at the, uh, the maximum, which is really, really large. And this is the response. This is responsible for the massive tsunami generation. Also, we experienced lots of uh, large, uh, the permanent deformation uh, of the land itself uh, of, the, uh, of the Tohoku region. So those are the horizontal uh, mo movement, which is about one meter. And then this is the, the vertical movement, which is also about uh, 50, uh, 0.5 meter to uh, one meter. Um, one kind of critical question uh, has been uh, asked many, many times after this event was that this tsunami forecasted and who might be responsible if um, it was not forecasted. So uh, there's lots of debates and then um, uh, is uh, happening still uh, in Japan. Uh, what we did as a civil engineer uh, uh, to protect uh, from the large tsunami was to, to look at the relatively recent uh, previous tsunami, such as 1896 and in 1933, uh, the, uh, the San Liku tsunami, which caused relatively large tsunami height, say 20 meter, 10 to 20 meter. But this is a graph showing um, the land up height at the different location along the latitude, okay? So the land up height is defined with respect to uh, sea level at the time of the, the event, and then the maximum uh, elevation reached by the, the tsunami. So, and then the red dots is for the uh, uh, last year's uh, tsunami event. And then the blue and then green are for the previous two events, which we used uh, for design purpose of the, uh, say, sea walls or the uh, the, the breakwater, and so on and so on. So you can see lots of dead, red dots exceed, way exceed uh, much uh, uh, the blue and then green dots. And then uh, in this sense, um, the, the 2011 event uh, was really, really unexpected 
uh, event uh, in light of uh, the recent history. However, if we look at the older records in terms of tsunami inundation, then uh, those historical records suggest that the uh, similar uh, uh, massive tsunami did occur in the past if we look, say, 1,000 years ago. So one of the, uh, the uh, events which often cited uh, after this event is that the 869 Jogan tsunami earthquake. And then basically, uh, the, the historical records suggest that the almost exactly the same uh, repetition, uh, uh, repeated earthquake uh, and a tsunami happened uh, in 2011, uh, uh, similar to this event. So there's a also uh, interesting kind of uh, or important uh, issues why this information, this, th those information was published in the science, scientific papers, and then the information was available when the design was uh, carried out. However, this information was not put into the decision-making process. So this is really, really interesting and important uh, things uh, we have to improve in the next round. Just to give you some kind of uh, the damage features uh, along the coast, uh, from the North Taro to the South Natori, which is relatively close to the Sendai. In Taro, uh, there's a famous uh, two layers of 10 meter uh, concrete seawall was there. You can see the gate for the first layer. First layer is completely washed away, 10 meter concrete blocks. And you can see the second layer here. This was also overtopped by the tsunami and then 200 people killed in this town. One interesting thing, or I should say important thing, uh, is that the, the people uh, within this uh, community felt safe. And then they didn't take any evacuation, or they delayed uh, evacuation. Unfortunately, the tsunami was powerful enough to exceed these two layers of uh, concrete block. So there's a lot of uh, important issue, although there were um, uh, the, the sufficient uh, the infrastructure there, but the people didn't take uh, the warning seriously, and then they didn't do, uh, do the appropriate evacuation. So uh, there's uh, some uh, issues uh, we have to improve uh, in terms of soft uh, evac uh, the risk management. Um, the another um, uh, iconic picture, I would say, uh, is that the, uh, the disaster management prevention headquarter in the uh, city of Minami San Riku. This is a three-story building uh, structure. And then, unfortunately, there were uh, about 30 staff when the, the tsunami hit. 20 people killed in this location. And then 10 people who survived were actually literally hanging this antenna. The 10-meter tsunami washed everything away, as you can see. And then um, uh, this has been uh, cited so many times uh, as a kind of sad story. Another interesting kind of uh, uh, famous picture is from the Onagawa, which is still in the Rias region. One interesting thing is that the, usually we believe, civil engineers believe that the, um, the wood frame structures is, are relatively vulnerable to the tsunami. And especially if the tsunami height exceeds two meter or three meter, then simply it will be washed away. But we feel a bit uh, safe uh, in living or in using uh, the concrete uh, reinforced structures. However, in Onagawa, uh, experiencing the 20 meter tsunami, it was uh, kind of pulled out and then washed away about 100 meter. So this kind of massive uh, block uh, structure can be destroyed easily by tsunami. The bottom two uh, pictures are from the coastal region uh, near Sendai, you can see there was completely developed uh, the residential community here. You can see nothing. And then this uh, structure uh, was standing, and then there must have been uh, uh, the other houses around this uh, house, but the, those houses were washed away. One interesting thing we should note is that the open ground, so that the, we can reduce the tsunami height, so that the water just go flow underneath. So this is a good kind of thing we can learn uh, from this event. Another thing I want to point out is that the huge kind of dent on the, uh, the, the house. This is caused by the debris impact, probably by the car or the possibly the container or the ship. 
So even if uh, we can, uh, we are successful in reducing the tsunami load in terms of static or hydrodynamic forces, uh, but we still have to think about the tsunami uh, uh, debris impact. This is the, the uh, picture taken probably, uh, I think, one or two days after uh, uh, in the Rikusen Takara, which is in the Rias region. This, uh, the spatial scale is about probably about one kilometer, this distance. You can see there's almost nothing left. There were completely fully developed uh, city there, uh, but the most of the residential buildings were uh, washed away. But you can see some kind of high runs high ground uh, relatively near uh, from the, the residential area. So people, people can uh, uh, get, uh, take some sort of uh, uh, evacuation to those uh, high ground. And then uh, we have to make sure that we can do this uh, in the next uh, significant event. This is another picture uh, taken after three days probably uh, because we can still see the lots of uh, water in Sendai. You can, uh, the, the, the spatial distance will be much, much different. This, from the coastline to the, this is actually the national highway, is about two, three kilometer. And you can see lots of water between the coastline and then uh, the embankment of the, the highway. So, uh, and then lots of uh, community was simply washed away. Um, another uh, interesting kind of case uh, uh, we visited during the, the trip uh, is from the, the Kamaishi, which is uh, in the northern part of the, the Tohoku region. This Kamaishi was very, very famous uh, for, uh, internationally uh, for the tsunami protection uh, because um, they constructed, just finished in 2010 or 2009, uh, the, the deepest uh, uh, the breakwater in the world. So they constructed about 1.5 kilometer uh, to uh, segment uh, breakwater. And then the depth at this, this location is about 60 meter. And then the, the height above the sea is about five to six meter. And then this breakwater after the event, the top part was completely uh, collapsed. And then significant tsunami uh, reached uh, the Kamaishi. However, those, uh, the back calculation of uh, those, uh, uh, the tsunami simulation uh, to investigate what was the, the effectiveness of those uh, breakwater uh, structure uh, suggest that the, those were, uh, those had uh, some uh, good uh, kind of, uh, those uh, breakwater reduced uh, the tsunami height probably about 40%, but the 40% reduction of the say 15 meter tsunami is not good enough to, to save uh, lots of lives in the city. So those are the, the several pictures we took uh, in Kamaishi. Uh, one thing you would notice is the huge ship sitting on the, the harbor. Uh, this can be a source of the huge debris impact. So depending on the, the structures uh, we have, uh, uh, those uh, structures, if destroyed or floated by tsunami, can be the source of destruction. So this is one interesting thing uh, we should consider uh, when we try to reduce the tsunami. Okay. Another thing, uh, important uh, city is the Taro. Uh, as I mentioned, there's two layers of the 10 meter tsunami. And then first layer was completely uh, uh, destroyed. And then uh, we can see only a uh, second layer. So uh, after this event, a uh, lot of uh, discussion uh, has been uh, uh, happening in Japan. Uh, what is the best strategy uh, to reduce the number of fatality in the future catastrophic tsunami? Option one uh, would be as is. One case is Fudai. Fudai uh, had 15.5 meter uh, gate, and then this protected completely the city or the community behind it. However, uh, there are uh, several other uh, bad cases. So uh, one example is the Taro, and then the city of Taro decided to reconstruct the 10 meter wall uh, with a 15 meter wall height. So this is another uh, decision that has been made after the event. So they chose to live at the same location, but um, uh, with a higher uh, capacity. Another option would be the relocation of the entire town or city to a high ground, 
but there's an ethical issue or the community or historical issue to, to, to do the relocation. And then some people really don't want to do the relocation because they are attached to the community and the land and so on and in the culture. And then our option four could be the combination of the horizontal and the vertical evacuation structures. So I just want to quickly, I want to uh, uh, go through some of the, the key features of the, the designing of the vertical evacuation building. So this is considered, uh, can be uh, the model city. Uh, lots of poor people living here. And then people live near the, the hill can take the, the horizontal evacuation. But people live near shore uh, might take evacuation to the vertical evacuation structures. And then uh, when we design those evacuation structures, we have to consider uh, the disproportionate uh, risk uh, to the elderly people, as I mentioned. And then uh, we civil engineer can do this calculation and we can do this uh, uh, designing. Uh, the, the basic information we need is the tsunami inundation height at the different location and then the flow velocity, which affect the tsunami loading to the building uh, in terms of static force and in the dynamic force. And then we can apply those forces and then we can design the structures. Uh, we carried out some quick um, the, uh, case study in the coastal plain uh, region, uh, Yamamoto town. In this region, uh, aging society is the one key feature and then uh, 676 deaths uh, were caused. And then there was only one vertical evacuation building, which saved only 90 people. So by having, say, five or six evacuation buildings in this region, we could uh, save uh, lots of people. Uh, just quickly, this is not my work, but my uh, colleagues uh, from the EFIT uh, did the, some, uh, the tsunami uh, questionnaire. And one interesting thing is that, the, uh, I think this one, they didn't think that the largest tsunami would come here. So only 13% thought that the tsunami risk, significant tsunami risk will be there. And even after the earthquake happened, magnitude 9.0 happened, only 33% took the evacuation. 67 people stayed a bit longer. So this is a really important thing. Another thing is, uh, interesting thing is that the majority used the car and then get, they get stuck and then they couldn't take the, the, the complete evacuation. So uh, we uh, got the data uh, for the inundation, actual inundation uh, uh, data, and we designed, uh, we placed five sites, one, two, three, four, five location to cover the whole uh, town of Yamamoto. And then uh, we calculated uh, what is the design uh, tsunami height and then what is the required height. And then we designed the structures and then we did the cost calculation. One interesting thing is that if we can implement this uh, uh, risk mitigation uh, uh, solution, then we can assume, say, 600 lives can be saved. And then the total of this cost will be about 50 million dollars, uh, sorry, million pounds. So then uh, about 80K uh, per life. This is comparably less, less, much less than 20 to 30K GBP per quality year life. So two, three years worth of the quality year life would be sufficient to, to fund this kind of structure. So I found that this is really, really uh, uh, important things. And then Japanese government hopefully would implement uh, because this is really cost effective. And then those are the just the sketches of the one uh, design structures. And then just coming back to the final slide, um, uh, just one thing I just want to uh, emphasize here is that the, in the next round, we really have to be able to imagine extreme situation. And in the scenario, if we do wrong in this coming up with the scenario, then whatever we prepare will be not as useful as we thought or we hope. And so this is really an uh, uh, important thing. And then hopefully, uh, probably Willie really can mention about how to do, uh, how to come up with the, the, uh, the extreme situation and then how to persuade uh, the, the member of the public. So this is the challenge I think uh, we face uh, or we are facing in Japan. Thank you very much.